What's up guys, Crazy here and welcome back to another day in Red Dead Redemption 2. In today's video I'm going to show you all of the melee weapons that exist in the game, how to acquire them and if you follow this guide it should not take you more than an hour to do so. Nonetheless, there are more than a dozen of soul weapons in the game, they are quite easy to get, so without further ado, make yourselves comfy, don't forget to leave a like on this video and let's get to it. Coming up first, we have the double bit hatchet which, as the name implies features a double bladed head with a regular wooden grip. You can find this near the Wallace station west of Valentine stuck inside a tree stump next to the broken fence. Like any other hatchet in the game this can also be used both as a melee weapon as well as a throwable one but do note that once you throw it you will need to go ahead and get it back otherwise you risk losing it. The second weapon on today's list is the antler knife and you'll find this one really close by to where you found the double bit hatchet, simply head over to the west until the edge of the map right here in this spot on a small hill and you should see a bunch of ruined trees with what appears to be a horrific death scene. Here you'll find a dead bear sitting on top of a mangled corpse, supposedly after a bear fight gone wrong, but if you look closely to the bear's skull area, you'll see a small knife being lodged into it. Go ahead and grab it and congratulations you've got yourself the antler knife which is a small razor sharp blade with a small chip or gap near the grip. Nonetheless it looks pretty and I like this one especially because it's so different. From here head directly south in the big valley once more and if you've discovered this part of the map you should see a road leading to a cave. Simply follow that road and eventually you'll reach the abandoned barrels dream mine and inside of it you will find a detonator leading to a pathway blocked by some stones. Detonate it to clear the path and then enter the mine. Inside of it bring your lantern and head onto the right side in the second room where you will find a corpse of a dead person with the white blade knife stuck inside of its back. Pick the knife up as it's now yours and congratulations you have the white blade knife but also grab the miner's helmet near it which can also be used to illuminate dark areas as well as the the gold nugget sitting next to the corpse as it can fetch quite a nice price at the fencer. Now if you ever played GTA Online and finished the quest chain that rewards you the stone hatchet then you can head south of this region in the Indian burial site and here in the middle of the rock formation you'll find the stone hatchet which is also arguably the best looking one in the game provided of course you finish the appropriate quest in the online version of GTA 5. Unfortunately I only play GTA 5 on my PC and not on my PS4 so I don't think I can finish this one unless I buy GTA again on my console but honestly I don't really want to waste any more time on the online as it's pretty much not something that I want to do anymore but if you did congratulations now you have the best looking hatchet in the game by far. Moving on to the fifth melee weapon on today's list we have the hunter's hatchet and you can find this in the north of Valentine in a place called Widow's Rock. Here you will see a small wooden shack with a bunch of tree stumps around it, head in the right side of it at the second tree stump and here you will find the hunter's hatchet being stuck into it. Grab it and it will be yours and this again can be used both as a melee as well as a throwable weapon but don't forget forget to retrieve it once you throw it otherwise it's pretty much gone. Oh and you can enter the wooden shack if you want to, there is not much to grab inside of it but there is something interesting for you to see so yeah I'm not gonna spoil anything, go ahead and check it out because it's pretty cool. From this spot move further into the region of Amberino, specifically center north, on the right side of where the Dakota River begins. Here you should find what appears to be a target practice range at the edge of a cliff or a big rock, whatever you want to call it. In it you will see a round target fallen on the ground with an ancient tomahawk still stuck in it. Grab it and it's now yours and you can go ahead and practice your target throwing, but be careful not to throw it too 
too far as it would otherwise go over the edge and I'm not kidding, this actually happened to me, I tried playing like target practice and I accidentally threw it over the edge even though I kinda made sure not to do it, but yeah, it happened, so be careful. At number 7, head over south of this region in a place right by the Moonstone Pond in the East Grizzlies, here you'll see a small cabin by the pond and in front of it you'll find the hewing hatchet being stuck in another tree stump. Some guides will also show you that there's actually two melee weapons in this region including the cleaver, but don't be fooled, you'll only get the hewing hatchet as it's the only one available and existing in here. Also I don't think you can enter the wooden shack this time around as it's kinda locked, at least it was for me, so if you can enter inside of this shack please go ahead and tell me, but I wasn't able to do so. Moving on to the rusted hunter hatchet, this is a similar model to the previous hunter hatchet except it's, well, rusty and you'll find it directly east from the Moonstone Pond in a place that is very close to the town of Annisburg. Here you'll find a hunter's cabin and outside of it another tree stump with the hatchet lodged into it. As usual, take it and also pay attention to the cabin as there is some cool stuff inside of it, including a cigarette card, some other consumables and some other interesting things that you'll want to see. I will not spoil them again because they are pretty cool, nothing story related but a little bit to spice things up. At number 9 we have the viking hatchet which I've covered in a previous video but I'll show it again anyway as it's part on the list and this can be found in a viking burial site a bit northwest of Annisburg close to the Kamasa river. The hatchet is stuck inside a human skull next to the stone table but it's not the only item of interest that can be found in this location. If you enter the small cave on the left side of the stone table you'll find the viking helmet and you can grab it from the skull that holds it but also pay attention to the formation of four skulls on the right side of it as beneath one of them there's also the viking comb that you can get and in order to do so you need to like pretty much smash one of the skulls and get the comb underneath it. Now since we're so close of Annisburg also pay it a visit specifically on the northwest side of it next to the train tracks as there will be another hidden melee weapon called the rusted double bit hatchet. It's right in front of the red house stuck in a tree stump as usual and you can grab it without fearing you'll ever alert anybody for theft. So you can grab it, no problems whatsoever, nobody will be alerted and as the name implies it's pretty much the rusty version of the double bit hatchet from the beginning of the video but it's just as damaging and far reaching as that one. Moving on to number 11 we have have the Civil War knife and you can find this one directly south of Annisburg between that one and the city of Saint Denis in a place called Fort Brennand or Brennan depending how you want to pronounce it. Now depending if you completed the bounty for the outlaw that resides there you might or might not encounter a rather large gang of bandits. Nonetheless after all of them are taken care of head inside of the house in the middle left side of the fort and behind Behind the crates you're going to find a secret entrance leading inside of a small basement. Here you will find a lot of cartridges as well as the civil war knife sitting on one of the boxes in the back but make sure you use the eagle eye to reveal all of the pickable items and even use your lantern to reveal all of the stuff that is in there because it can get quite dark even during the day. At number 12 we have the beautiful ornate dagger you can get from the vampire that roams around the dark streets of Saint Denis. To get this one you'll need to follow five vampire clues scattered around the city on walls that you need to inspect and then triangulate the vampire's position. Nonetheless you can pause this video right now and check all of the five clue locations as they are quite easy to find. They are in like a small section of the map not really scattered around all of the city but more like in the city center and around those parts. After you've gotten all five of those clues and wrote them down in your journal go sleep at the local hotel until midnight and from there on you can pretty much visit this dark alley that I'm showing right now on the screen in the middle of the night and here you'll finally encounter the elusive vampire currently sucking some blood from his current victim. Have a chat with him and then pretty much kill him to get his dagger. Do know that if you don't kill him or if he kills you, you won't be able to get this dagger anymore so make sure you're at least saving before meeting him because it's an important dagger to get, it's pretty cool looking, it's probably the best looking
everything right now in the game and you will lose it otherwise. From Saint Denis you'll most probably want to head southwest where the next melee weapon is, also probably the best and my favorite on the list. And here you will find a small group of three islands which are really easy to get to and the first one you will find an abandoned boat upon it with a pirate sword inside of it next to what appears to be some human remains. This is also the only sword in the game that you can get, it's pretty awesome looking as I've said and it kind of makes you look like a pirate so yeah go ahead grab it but do pay attention to your surroundings as the waters are pretty much infested with crocodiles and they can kill you quite easily. Also there's a lot of snakes so your horse might get scared of all of this interaction and predators around it so yeah pay attention to it again because it can kill you and if you die with the sword you're pretty much going to be rolled back at the previous save point or close by and you won't be able to find it anymore at least that's what happened to me moving on we have the jawbone knife which can be acquired after successfully completing the stranger quest called a test of faith and after delivering 30 dinosaur bones to deborah mcginnis to start this quest head northeast of flatneck station in the heartlands and you'll find miss deborah researching some skeletal remains after that is done you'll need to collect all of the 30 dinosaur bones that exist on the map but yeah pause the video right now if you want to do the searches for yourself you can see all of the dinosaur bone locations on the map right now but I'll also make a video later on explaining this quest entirely. And this brings us to the last three weapons on the list which are super easy to get and these are the machete, the cleaver and finally the regular hatchet. The machete can be grabbed from the enemy soldiers on the island of Guarma once you get there but if you missed it and you didn't get it you will be able to get it at the fence vendor once you get back on the mainland in chapter 5. All of these three weapons as a matter of fact will be available to you at the vendor and they don't cost more than $10 each so they're pretty easy to get all you need to do is complete like half of the chapter 5 once you get back into the main region from the island of Guarma but as I've said the machete can be gotten as soon as you are on that island and I'm pretty sure that all of the soldiers over there have a machete you can grab and this officially covers all of the existing melee weapons in Red Dead Redemption 2 as always if you enjoyed this video then make sure to rate it down below also subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this and I'll see you guys next time.